Hey everyone, this is Ryan, and today we'll create our own custom warning message that will display beside a field where a validation rule has been violated. So this error message will be more obvious than the out of the box notify function, and we can also seamlessly fade it in and out the error message, so it's more noticeable to the user. So the first thing that we're going to do is look at the out of the box notify function. So we'll press play on here. And what we'll do is enter a value that's above 100. So we'll enter in, let's say 109, we'll change it, and you'll see the probability cannot be greater than 100. So that's great, but it's at the top, not as noticeable for the end user. And instead, what we wanna do is create a error message that's right beside the field that's been violated. So to do that, what we will do is go to the existing error message, We'll comment that out and we'll copy a label here, paste it beside, and we'll take the existing error message, paste it in. Okay, and we'll just bring it over slightly. And what we will do is make it red and we'll make it semi bold so that it's more noticeable for the end user. So that's great, but we will have to actually um, display it to the user when the rule is violated. So what I mentioned at the start of this uh, video was we can actually fade the error message in and display it to the user. So what we will do to do that is we'll actually add a timer to the form. So we'll go to add, timer. We'll add the timer. Okay. We'll put it at the bottom. We'll eventually hide these at the, at the end and we'll set the duration to two seconds. Okay. So that'll be 2000 here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to actually update a variable to trigger the start of this timer. So what we'll do is update context and display fade in true so what we'll do here is copy this new variable go to this timer and go to auto start and paste it in so pretty much whenever this value um, display fade in is true, it will trigger this timer a lot as long as it's, you know, set to false already. Okay. So that's great. But what we can do here is when the timer ends, we actually want it to stop. We want the, the context to turn to false so that we can always re-trigger it again. So we'll update context display fade in false and we will reset the timer. Okay, so that's great. However, you'll see that currently this is still showing. So what we want to do is go to the color of the label here and what you will see is we have the RBGA uh, color code here and we want to change around like how it's solid right now to a different transparency so to do that what we will do is we'll go back to our timer we'll change it to timer fade in so we know which one that we're using and what we will do is for the fade in we'll say the timer fade in dot value so that's the current time divided by the timer fade in duration. So what that means is we're essentially going from zero up to one, okay? So at this point, you'll see that it's now gone. It's because we're currently at zero for um, the transparency here. So if we go and press play and enter in, let's say 104, you'll see how it displays and then it's hidden is because we reset the field at the end. So what we can now do is actually add another timer. 
So I'll just copy the one that we have already. And this is going to be our wait timer. So what we do want to do is once it's solid, we want it to stick around for, let's say about five seconds. So at this point, we'll set it to five. So that's 5,000. However, one thing is, is the on start. So the auto start here is currently display fade in. We don't want that. So what we will do is we'll create a new context variable for display weight. And we'll set that to true. And we'll copy this. And then what we will do is display weight. And then what we will do is on timer end, give me one second here, we will set that to false. So great. And it will reset itself so it goes back to zero. But we also want it to fade out. So what we will do at this point is we'll copy the timer and we'll use a fade out And what we will do is with the wait timer, we want to trigger the fade out now. So to do this, we'll update context. We will display fade out. We'll set that to true. And so the display fade out will trigger this fade out timer. So now, we're going to set it to 2000, which is two seconds. And then here, we're going to change the um, on timer end for the fade out to be false. And we're going to reset the value. So now it's nearly there. Okay, we've set all the values to what we want. However, we want to ensure that the label fades in and out appropriately. So right now you'll see that's currently, you know, timer fade in value divided by duration. So what we want to do here is we want to display if it's the fade in, we want to use this calculation. And if it's fade out, we want to use a different calculation. So to do that, we will go to, if it's display fade out, we'll go to timer fade out value, oops, uh, value divided by timer fade out Uh, duration, but we want the inverse. So to do that, we just do one minus. So it starts from one and it lesses the calculation here of the value, like the current time minus the divided by the duration. So we'll count down. And then what we want is if it's in the wait condition, so we'll display wait we want to show a solid color. And then otherwise, it will essentially be hidden at this point. So we want the transparency to be zero. So if I close all these down here, you will see that we have one if condition, two, three. So if I bring it down here, and we'll close this one out, this is our conditional statement to say if it's fade in, we're going to fade in with this calculation. If it's fade out, we'll use this calculation. And if it's we're waiting on the solid color, we'll display one. Um, so it's a solid color. Otherwise, it's completely transparent, which is the default value set at zero. So now if we happen to go the probability and we hit, let's say, 105, We'll see it fades in, 
It's solid. Should be for five seconds. And then we see that it's not, you know, fading out. So there's obviously a reason why on the fade out here. So to do that, we'll take a look at the display weight is false and it's true. So we'll take a look at the timer, the on start tier. So you'll see that's currently display weight. So obviously copying and pasting causes a little bit of a problem, but what we will do is paste that in. So it's display fade out and we'll just check the timer one more time. So display fade, fade out set to false. So what we will do is we'll try it again, hit tab. So it's fading in, so it should be solid for five seconds. And then we should have it fade out at this point. Okay, so we see it fade in, fade out very nicely, and we could trigger it again. So it fades in, fades out very nicely. And we could do this also in a pretty quick fashion as well. So I'm um, gonna say error after error. So 103, error, let's say 109, error. So you can see how it could just fade in, fade out. So hopefully this gives you an idea of how you can implement this in your apps. Um, it's a great tool to put notifications right beside the fields uh, where you're currently at. And it's a nice aesthetic as well to nicely fade in and out these error messages. Um, because sometimes when you just pop it up and display it to the user, um, it's not as, a, as a, you know, apparent to them as the, um, the fading of the uh, error message.